All right, 16 minutes before the top of the hour. President Trump's controversial refugee travel ban getting a second shot from the Supreme Court. Justice Anthony Kennedy temporarily restoring the revised travel restrictions on those six Muslim majority nations by delaying a lower court's ruling to end it. We need some explanation. <laughs> so here's Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. So it was on, it was off. It was on, now it is. The, the modified version of the president's second order, mm -hmm. the one that the Supreme Court itself modified, is still in effect. And that one says, if you have a, quote, this is the issue, significant relationship, close quote, in the United States, you get to come here even if you're from one of the six countries that the president designated. I've been arguing for months. The first order that the president signed on January 27th and the second order that he signed in March are absolutely constitutional and lawful mm -hmm. because the Constitution gives this authority to the president and the Congress has expressly said in a statute the president can stop immigration from designated mm -hmm. countries for a finite period of time for national security purposes. The courts tried to reread this and the courts tried to change it. It made right. its way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said the travel ban stands unless you have a significant relationship. And that's the problem right that's there. That's the problem. Just Justices What's significant? Cla right. Justices Clarence Thomas, Sam Alito, and Neil Gorsuch dissented, saying, what is a significant relationship? But You're going to have litigation all over the uncle. place as to what it means. And they a were babysitter. correct. <laughs> and their anyone. dissent also said, most respectfully, six colleagues, who the heck are you to rewrite a presidential executive order? This is the president's authority, not ours. So when it went back to, Cal to Hawaii to define significant relationship, the Hawaii judge expanded it. The Ninth Circuit, when it was appealed by the Justice Department, expanded it again. Mm -hmm. That was appealed to the Supreme Court yesterday. Justice Kennedy said, everything's on hold until we can get all the briefs in. They're due at noon today. You'll get an informal vote by the Supreme Court tomorrow right. morning. Okay. Now, they're hearing the case. Oral argument on the whole issue. The power of the president to ban Great. Uh, immigrate, immigrants for whatever reason the first week in October. But Judge, here's the thing, and you brought it to this. You said right away this is constitutional, but then these judges came back outside the Supreme Court and said, I watched him campaign. I know what he really means by that. I don't like his anti-Muslim fervor, so that's what he's getting to. Therefore, we're, I'm going to get rid of this. No, Brian, you're so smart. I have never seen this before, where the words of a candidate are used against that same person when he's now in office. You often say incendiary things when you're running for office in the heat of the moment to gin up the crowd, to resist your yeah. opponent for whatever reason. But you're right. I, I know you read all these cases, Brian. I, you, are, you are correct. I'm very lonely. These, lo these lower court smart. judges uh. and these litigants who are state attorneys general in Hawaii and the state of Washington found everything that Donald Trump, the candidate said that was incendiary about uh, immigrants from the Middle East and threw it in the mix and said, therefore, he's against Muslims, therefore, he hates Islam, therefore, this is a Muslim ban, therefore, it's unconstitutional. The Supreme Court said, we're not going to go there. All right. And All right. Just, just real quick, why are the 9-11 hijackers not con uh, tried and convicted already? I wish, What's going on? I wish you, you and I talked about this 16 years ago. Uh, well, he admitted I, guilt. I, I, said, I'm guilty. Kill me. I wish that he had been tried in federal court here in New York. The case would have been over. He would have been convicted. It would have been up, upheld on appeal. 16 years to try five people is unheard of in American history. In a nutshell, here's the issue. The government wants to use evidence that the defendants say was obtained under torture. So the judge is holding hearing after hearing after hearing to find out what actually happened in these interrogation sessions and was it torture. It's taking 16 years. The government has a right. very excellent team of lawyers. The chief prosecutor is a longtime friend of mine. The defendants have very excellent teams of lawyers. But 16 years to try five people. They tried 22 Nazis in Nuremberg in three and a half years. Right, and they're dead. Yes. No speedy right. trials for these guys. No, Thank you, Judge. All. all right, Judge. Thank That's you. a lot we just did. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Judge, can you give yourself a raise. <laughs> you you uh, energize me, Brian. Thank you. So, Judge Hillary Clinton, her book comes out today. It why explains... are we promoting it? I don't know. <laughs> so Brian keeps Everybody's asking. talking about it, though. It explains all the reasons why she lost the presidential election.